Ladies and gentlemen, tonight live from Ingram Cooking, Queen Carbonara! Finalmente, nonna! Finalmente, it's time for the Carbonara! Our friends, I'm sure they've been waiting for the Carbonara since a long time. So since we're doing all the Roman pastas, tonight is the night. We will show you the Carbonara. Allora, nonna, before you start chopping it, buona nonna, nonna is all excited, nonna, calmati! Be quiet, nonna, calm down! Allora, before we start with that, let's tell our friends the ingredients for the carbonara because there is a whole world behind the carbonara, okay? There's many different theories, many different schools. Number one, guanciale, real good guanciale. Guanciale means a pork cheek, so it's the face of the pork. No pancetta, no bacon, right, nonna? Guancia, guancia. Next. Pecorino cheese. Pecorino Romano. Romano cheese, make sure you get the one with the black rind, the authentic Romano cheese. It's very salty, but it's good. Poi, next. Egg. Eggs, obviously. If they're organic, even better. Poi. Black pepper. Black pepper. It's not a coincidence that we do it with the, here in the Martha, because it doesn't have to be too thin. We want a little thicker. And last, but not least, obviously, the pasta. Make sure you always get a good pasta, okay, Nonna? We need to tell that our friends, our friends, that the pasta makes a difference. A real good, 100% durum wheat pasta. When you touch it, has to be rough. We don't want the pasta that looks like plastic. Just no, Nonna. No, that's for the for the pets. Allora, first thing we gotta do. The water is boiling here. Let's add the salt. Remember, you wanna make the pasta water almost like seawater, so very salty. But in this case, since we have the Romano cheese that is very salty, we do not want to exaggerate it with the salt here in the water, sì. in the pasta. Just sì. Otherwise it's going to be too salty. So, just a little bit, okay? You just have to taste a little bit of saltiness. <coughs> salt, via, no more salt, on the side. Ready with the spaghetti. Vai. Twist like this. Pam, dentro. I'm not going to push it down. You control the pasta. No, no, you take care of the pasta. I'm going to take care of the guanciale. Quindi, usually it's about a slice per person. I'm going to cut a nice chunk here. Let me show you how to cut this guanciale because this is also important. Allora, there's a lot of fat. That's fine. We like that. We want that. It's all flavor. The skin off. Uh, you can also use it, okay? Uh, when you fry the guanciale, you can throw it in there, you can use it for that, so it releases all the fat and gives extra flavor, but we don't care, we got enough fat here. Quindi, uh, no, no, how do you like the guanciale? Nice and thin or...? Because even here, there's people that likes it soft, there's people that likes it crispy, the way it should be. We make it the way it should be. Quindi, thin and crispy. Allora, once again, about a thin slice per person. Eccoci qua, nice big pieces that we will saute in his own fat, but I'll tell you about it in a little bit. Allora, first thing I want to do is to toast some pepper. Why that? Because this will make the pepper, just like all the other spices, uh, is going to make the pepper release all this smell, all this uh, flavor. Allora. Don't be cheap with the pepper. That's important in the carbonara. All the Roman pastas you usually get a lot of black pepper. Quindi, let's toast the pepper very quick. High heat. Via, done with the pepper. Allora, aspetta, aspetta. First to dry. Aspetta, aspetta. Aspetta, aspetta. Prima voglio aspetta che dry. You smell it. When you start smelling the pepper, okay, it has a very unique uh, smell. You put it on the side. So I'm gonna put it here in the bowl where I will mix the eggs. Pan it back to the stove. Now we can finally throw in our guanciale. We separate the pieces. That's the pepper. That's the pepper. <laughs> Dr. Pepper. You know in America they have Dr. Pepper, nonna? You know what that is? We don't have it in Italy, but it's good. I used to drink it all the time. Hello. Very important. 
you cook the guanciale as I show you, like this. We didn't add any oil, nothing in it, okay? That's enough. There's already enough uh, reason, in fact, uh, clean. We cook the guanciale as is. In the meanwhile, with the eggs, that's about 100 grams of pasta, even a little more. I'm gonna use a small whole organic egg. Now, even here, different schools. There's people that uses only the egg yolks, which is fine, but then you're gonna get a very heavy sauce. Usually, my personal um, way of making it is like half whole eggs, half yolks. For example, you're making 500 grams of pasta, I usually do like three whole eggs and two yolks. So right now, do you agree with me? Instead of all egg yolks. And you can even use all the whole eggs because then it's gonna be too liquid, okay? So what I do, half whole eggs, the other half only the yolks because it will give extra flavor. Here is cooking, I go ahead with one egg. Aspetta, let's do like this. The whole egg, and here, tac, via, done. Very important also, the Romano cheese, okay? Quindi, let's mix the egg first like that, a little bit, with the pepper. Then I go ahead with the Romano cheese. Even here, we do not, don't wanna be cheap, but we wanna put a lot of Romano cheese in it. How much? I would say almost one to one to the egg, but a little less, okay? We eyeball. We want the egg to be thick. Now, let me show you in a second what I mean when I say that. Do you see that? Okay. And I'll leave it on the side for now because it's not done yet. It's very thick. Actually, you know what? I can put even a little more. Very thick, almost like a paste. Not nice frying the guanciale. The pasta keeps going. Let's clean the table here. Via, 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 we're done with all this. Just wanna leave a little bit of the black pepper on the side to garnish our plate at the end. Priest hat, right? Cappello di prete? Ah, you like the other one, more color. Must see that it's green on me. It's green, Let's get a, 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 green with the yellow. Yeah, the nice contrast. It's welcome. Perfect, okay. we like that. On the side, more like this. Ah, this one is right in front of you. Perché Max, cosa significa che anche in cucina l'occhio vuole la sua parte? Even in the kitchen, uh, how can you translate that? No, you say these things in Italian. Even in the kitchen, the eye wants his part. Allora, the guanciale here is going. Uh, very important also that you don't want to burn it. So the temperature doesn't have to be too high, okay? So let it simmer it slowly, so it releases all the fat. See that, kind of like bacon so far. Ti faccio vedere. Si. Vedi? All right, eccoci qua. Very crispy, okay. Allora. What I want to do, aspetta nonna, just a few more seconds. See, I want to check the pasta first. Pasta needs a few more, a couple of more minutes. Okay. So our guanciale here is, re is releasing all the fat. Now I'm gonna take the guanciale out and obviously not waste, I'm not gonna waste that fat. That fat is going here with the egg, okay? I know, if you're on a diet, definitely the carbonara is not the kind of pasta you want, but it's worth it, right, nonna? Eh, diciamo qualcosa sul carbonara? Carbonara, perché questo nome? Why this name, carbonara? Carbonari was a movement back in, uh, uh, yeah, we all studied history here, but it should be risorgimento. How is it risorgimento in English? 18th. Risorgimento, 1800, it was a movement I'm sure for those who've been in Italy, you heard about Mazzini, all these people. It was a kind of like, uh, these people were revolutionary, revolution, vabbè. 
they were very um, patriotic. very important people. Eh? Patriotic. Patriotic people. Bravo. Thank you for passing me the term. And the, the legend says that these people made this pasta in the beginning. So they were the first ones that made this pasta. That happened here in Rome. And by the way, carbone means charcoal. Okay, so this move, movement, these people used to work as uh, charcoal pickers. Does it make any name? Any Miners. sense? Miners. Eh? Miners. 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 That's right. Uh, yeah, I need yeah. to study a little more English, you know. And I need to see. I, I should go six months in America again to to yeah. learn, you know, because my English is getting rusty. <laughs> Allora, non mi stai out dei guanciale, facciamoglielo vedere per favore, so they know what they need to get, okay? Has to be crispy, just like that. You can also make the pieces even thinner if you want. Pasta is almost ready, just one thing, non aspetta, aspetta, aspetta. So why the miners? The what? Why the miners? Esatto, <laughs> either way is fine. Let's add the fat in here. Slowly. Nonna, can you please hold the bowl? Grazie, nonna. When you do this, be careful, okay? You do not want to cook the egg, but you want to pasteurize the egg. See how creamy it is? And on the top of that, you can also do this here in the pot. You want to bring the egg to 60, 55, 60 Celsius degrees. In that way, you pasteurize the egg, so it's safe, but it will not lump, okay? It will not lump up, so it's gonna be nice and smooth. No, no, we can transfer the pasta in the pan. This has to be off. That's it, Nana? Okay, simple. Okay. Are you sure? No. Are you going to waste some pasta? No. Very important. This? See. Si. Like usually you see we use uh, pasta water. Not in this case. Because when we add the egg paste inside, it's going to liquefy. It's very important that the pan is not too hot. Remember, we do not want to make scrambled eggs. The carbonara, the egg has to be like a sauce and not in lumps, okay? Giusto, nonna? Quindi, what happens? If the pan is too hot and you drop the egg in it, you will get scrambled eggs with pasta and guanciale, which is not the carbonara, it's something else. A little bit at a time, I'm going to drop this paste in here. You did it too. I think... Uh, Max, what about the cream? The cream? Not in our carbonara. That's probably the American version. Eccolo qua. Okay. Perfect cream. Do you see that? It liquefies. Yes. The pasta is very al dente, no? Eh? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Let's get a little. By the way, by the way, as somebody suggested me, the reason why this pasta was born uh, uh, with the carbonari, with the people that joined this movement, is because when they used to go to work in the mines, they couldn't bring anything fresh. So everything had to be dry, like the Romano cheese and the guanciale. Seasoned. So, season it, yeah, yeah, dry, season it, uh, cured. Anyway, let's go ahead with our carbonara. Let's make our classic. No, this time I want to do it a little different. Exactly. Exactly, no, I agree with you. Nice and long like that. Not always the nest, the nest, the basta with the nest, okay? Okay. Opla. She said, she said, no. See, 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 I can make it, nonna. I can make it, no. Like that. Oh, we roll the pasta like that. Fantastico. 
the guanciale on the top, a few pieces also on the side. Guanciale everywhere, guanciale everywhere, it's not enough. Why guanciale? Why guanciale? Because it's Roman, because it's local. So it's a Roman pasta back then. Uh, it's not that you go to the grocery store and you find whatever you want. Back then you had to eat whatever was local. A little extra pepper because I like it. Yeah. Why not a few flakes of pecorino romano? No, no. Uh, For all of you, la regina please, the, the, the queen of the pastas, pasta. please make the carbonara in the right way. Then you can personalize it. You can put whatever you want, but it's not carbonara. No cream. And definitely no cream, no peas, no what else, broccoli or things like that. The carbonara is this. Then if you want to make something that looks like a carbonara, it's up to you. But if you make carbonara, this is what you want. Ciao belli miei! Ciao, ciao. Buona pasta romana!